Hello and welcome to today's math lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera? Hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our lap and close our eyes. When you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Excellent. And next, we'll do our stretching sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. Let's begin by stretching up high. High to the sky. And then, let's go down low to touch our toes. And then let's go back up high. And this time, can we go tippy toe high? And when we're there, let's have a wave. And then back down to touch our toes again. And now stand up and shake it out. Shake it out. Arms and legs. Shake it out. Okay, guys, and now we'll take our right hand and find our left foot. Then back up, left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. And one more, left hand, right foot. Excellent, and another little shake. And to finish, we will do five jumps straight up. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys, have a seat. And today, in math class, we're going to begin learning about a new topic. And the name of this topic, guys, is data. Data. Yes. So first of all, let's write the word data on the board. D A T A. Data. Now, does anybody have any idea what data means? If you hear the word or see the word data, what do you think about? What comes into your head? Data basically means facts and figures. You know, like when we collect things and we want to know the amounts and the numbers of something, that is what we call data. So we can say 
data equals facts, F, A, C, T, S, facts, and figures, F, I, G, U, R, E, S, data, facts and figures. For example, let's count the amount of students I have in my class today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine students is what we call data because it gives us the amount of students in the class. Now guys, how many teachers do you see? One teacher. So one teacher is also data because it gives us the amount of something. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do a quick demonstration to show how we can begin to collect data. So let's think about a topic where we all have something. I know, we'll use favorite color, okay? So let's use the topic favorite, F, A, V, O, R, I, T, E. Favorite colors, C, O, L, O, R, S. All together guys, favorite colors. Okay, so I'll go first. My favorite color is blue. So teacher, T-E-A-C-H-E-R, B-L-U-E. My favorite color is blue. And now I'll ask my students for their favorite color. Lakau, what is your favorite color? Pink, okay? So that gal's gone for pink. So let's collect that data. That gal. How do we spell pink, guys? Excellent. And now on to Prel. Prel, what is your favorite color? Blue. Okay, same as teacher. And blue is spelled B-L-U-E. Bang Pong, what is your favorite color? Black, okay, Bang Pong's gone for black. P A Bang Pong. How do we spell black, guys? B L A. C, K. Okay, now for down. Down, what is your favorite color? My favorite color is blue. Same as teacher and same as Prel. So we have three for blue so far. Down. Blue. And next we have net. Net, what is your favorite color? Red, you like red, okay. First one for red, good, we get a new color. Net likes red. How do we spell red, guys? R-E-D. R-E-D, okay. Next student, Pak Bung, what is your favorite color? Yellow, okay, excellent, we get a new color again. Okay, new color, guys. How do we spell yellow? O W. Yes, well done. And now on to Pat. Pat, what's your favorite color? Favorite color is orange. Excellent. Another new color. So Pat P. A H T orange O A N G E orange Nadia what is your favorite color 
Blue. I think Blue is going to win. Nadia. And how do we spell Blue, guys? Excellent. And finally, Chu. What is your favorite color? What color do you like the most? Gray. Gray or red? Yeah. Red, okay. So at the bottom here we have two. R, E, D. Red. So there you go. What we've done is we've done a class survey. Now the word survey is something you'll hear quite a bit because survey is things we use to collect data. And what we've done here, we've collected the data of the favorite colors of everybody in this room. And what we'll do in future lessons, we'll learn how to analyze and tally the data. But for now, we're only concentrating on the first stage. So you see here, guys, the names of the colors. This is what we call our data. This is the data we have collected. So the focus of today's lesson, C, O, L, L, E, C, T, I, N, G. Collecting, Collecting data. data. And what do we mean by data? Facts and figures, such as favorite colors. Yes, what we've done is a demonstration of how we can collect data. And guys, that was excellent. Very well done. <laughs> what we've got now is we've got a video and PowerPoint presentation for our students to better understand the ways and methods we can use to collect data. So let's turn our chairs to look at the TV screen, guys. And now, let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation, collecting... Data. Collecting data is the process of gathering facts. Yes, when we want to know the amounts or the types of something, we will collect data to find out. Data is collected To provide, to provide information about a, about a specific, specific topic. topic. Yes. Remember earlier in the lesson when we looked at favorite colors? Favorite colors was our specific topic. And then what we did is we went around the class and asked everybody for their favorite color. And the answers were the data that we collected. We can collect data by organizing a survey. Yes, a survey is like a list of questions. One question is just a question, but if we have a list of questions, that's what we call a survey. And that's how we can use to collect our data. A survey helps us to ask questions we want the answers to. Yes, if we want to find things out, it's good to prepare a survey beforehand so we can prepare the questions and get the answers to the things we want to know. We can use surveys to find out answers to almost anything. Yes, like look at this table here. This survey is about shoes we wear. And you can see there are three different types of shoes. We have sport shoes, shoes. slip-on shoes, slip shoes, and sandals. sandals. And do you know what a tally is? 
tally is a mark we give whenever we get a positive answer. We don't need to count all the time. We can just make a mark because it's quicker. And then at the end, what we can do is we can mark up all the answers or all the marks on the tally for our total. So you can see here, one, two, three, four, and the fifth mark is always the one across. Because by looking at it like this, we know straight away, five. How many in this tally? One, two, three. And this tally? Four. Yes. So when you're doing a survey, rather than write the numbers all the time, use tally marks, which we'll look at in another lesson. We find out the answers to the questions and record them. Yes. Any questions, guys? Okay, that was great. Well done. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the video and PowerPoint presentations to have a better understanding of how we can collect data and the various ways and types of data we can collect. And soon we'll be doing an exercise to find out another type of data in our classroom. But for now, it's time for our stretch sequence. So let's stand up, guys. And I think for this stretch sequence, we'll have a game. We'll play a game of teacher says. So let's listen carefully, guys. If you hear teacher says, yes, if teacher says hands on head, hands on head. Teacher says hands on hips. Hands on your knees. Teacher says stand up three. Teacher says arms in the air. Teacher says arms down. Arms in the air. Teacher says arms in the air. Teacher says one arm up, one arm down. Teacher says swap. Swap. <laughs> Teacher says swap. Teacher says both arms down. Teacher says turn around. Teacher says turn back the other way. And back the other way. Very good, guys. Well listened. Teacher says hands on shoulders. Teacher says hands on hips. Let's have a wiggle. <laughs> Teacher says hands on knees. Teacher says into a ball. Five, four, three, two, one. Teacher says jump excellent guys and teacher says sit down and now it's time for our board activity so what we need to do now is we need to pick another topic that we can think about collecting data and it's a good idea for the topic to be something that everybody has in common and I think one thing we all have in common is that we all have pets at home so we can now do an activity to look at pets at home. So first of all, guys, how do we spell pets? P-E-T-S. Pets at A-T. And how do we spell home? H-O-M-E. Okay. All together... Pets at home. So the first thing we need to do when we're looking to collect data is we need to organise a question or a series of questions that is a survey. So let's think, what's a good question we can ask to find out pets at home? Can anybody think of the question we can ask? I know. What pets do you have at home okay so our question what pets p e t s what pets do you have 
Y O U H A V E. And then at home. Okay, is that correct? What have I forgot? Think about question, guys. What is question mark? Excellent. So all together, what pets do you have at home? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to call my students forward and ask them the question, and then we'll begin to record the data. Teachers, you'll be doing the same exercise in your class and you can use the same topic or you can think of a better one that suits your class more. So first student forward please, Lakau, can you come and join me? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is ask the question, ready guys? What pets do you have at home? Lakau. How many cats? Three cats, okay, so we have three cats, C, A, T, S, one dog, okay, three cats, one dog, so there's our first amount of data there, Lakau, that was excellent, high five, big round of applause for Lakau. So you can see we've got our first piece of data. Three cats, one dog. But we're not finished yet, we're only getting started. So next student forward please, Prel. And then we'll ask the same question to Prel. Ready guys? What pets do you have at home, Prel? Two cats and one dog. So we'll record the data. Two cats, C, A, T, S, one, D, O, G. And notice how we use the plural for cats because it's more than one, two, but only the singular for dog. Prel, that was excellent. High five for Prel, big round of applause. So teachers, you can pause the video in your classroom now and you can carry on with the same exercise with your students. And as I say, you can use the topic we are, pets at home, or if there's a better topic in your classroom, you can use that one instead. So next student, Pangpon, come and join me at the front. Okay, so let's find out about Pangpon's pets. What pets do you have at home Bang pong. Dogs. dogs. How many? Four. four dogs. Okay. So we can write the number four. D O G. Is that correct, guys? Four dog? S. Why do we need S? Dogs. dogs plural. Excellent. Well done. Four dogs and five chickens. Five chickens. Wow. Four dogs. Five, how do we spell chickens, guys? C-H-I-C-K-E-N-S for plural. Bang pong, that's excellent. High five, big round of applause for bang pong. So you can see now the way we're beginning to form our data. We've mainly got cats and dogs, but now we've got chickens too. Next student, Dan, come and join me at the front. So once again, let's ask Dan the question, what pets do you have at home? Dan, what pets do you have? Three cats, excellent. Three cats. And do you have any more pets? Just three cats? Okay, excellent. High five, big round of applause for down. Next student, Net, 
come and join me at the front. It's time to find out about your pets. So, Net, what pets do you have at home? Do you have any pets? Five chickens. Five chickens. Wow, Net has five chickens. So we can write five C H I C K E N. Is that correct, guys? Five chicken. Why do we need the S? Plural, more than one, we need the S. Net, that's brilliant. Net and his five chickens. High five, big round of applause for Net. <laughs> and next, it's the turn of Pak Bung. So Pak Bung, what pets do you have at home? One dog and many fish. Okay, how many fish do you think you have? Can you give me a number? Because for our data, we need a number. 13. 13 fish. Okay, excellent. One dog, 13 fish. Now, what do you notice about fish, guys? Fish is special. Fish is the same whether it's one or 13. One fish, 13 fish. We can use both. So Pak Bung, that was excellent. High five, big round of applause for Pak Bung. Okay, and now for Pat. Come and join me, Pat. Let's find out about your pets. Pat, what pets do you have at home? Six chickens, okay. Six. How do we spell chickens, guys? Excellent. Six chickens. Any more? No? Okay, very good. High five. Big round of applause for Pat. And now for Nadia. Let's find out about Nadia's pets. Nadia, what pets do you have at home? One dog. One cat. And three chickens. Excellent. One dog, one cat, three chickens. Nadia, that's excellent. High five. Big round of applause for Nadia. And finally, two. Come and join me at the front. Chu, what pets do you have at home? Do you have any pets at home? No. How many dogs do you have? Three dogs, okay. Three dogs. Any cats or chickens? No, okay, excellent Chu, well done. High five. A big round of applause for Chu. So you can see, through that exercise, we've now collected our data. We have the numbers and the types of animals that all of our students have as pets. And this is what we call collecting data. Okay? So very well done, guys. That was great. And now it's time for our worksheet activity. So teachers, what you need to do is print off a worksheet for each of the students in your class. And on this worksheet is the space for five questions. So for this activity, students need to ask their friends five questions. It can be the same question or it can be different ones. And what our students need to do is record the question in the left-hand column, then in the second column, the name of the person they ask, and then, in the final column, the answer that their friend gives. For example, in the question part, you could say, what is your favourite food? And then, the person you ask, teacher Wes, and the answer, noodles. But our students can think of their own questions 
for the data they want to collect. But what's the first thing to do, guys? Yes, and give our students around 15 minutes because they have to think and write their answers too. So Chu, this one's for you. Nadia, for you. Pat, here's yours. Pat Boon, you're welcome. Ned, for you. Down, for you. Bangpon, for you. Rao, this one's for you. And Lakao, this one for you. So have a think, guys. What data would you like to know about your friends? Pets at home? Favourite colour? Favourite food? Favourite sports team? Favourite sport? Think about what question you want to ask your friends. Then in the left-hand column, write the question and pick five friends who you want to ask. And you can ask teacher too. If you want to ask me, you can ask me. Okay? And this is what we call collecting data. We ask the question and we record the answer. Like pets at home. Favourite colour. Favourite food. Like if I ask Nadia, Nadia, what is your favourite food? And Nadia will say KFC. So there's the answer to one question. What is your favourite food? I ask Nadia, and Nadia says KFC, which is one of my favourite foods too. Okay. So think of your question first, guys. What questions would you like to ask your friends? You can use the exercise on the board as the first one. What pets do you have at home? And you can ask your friends again. Or you can ask me. I have one dog, Coco. Anything you're not sure about? Any spellings you need to help me, me to help you with, let me know. So Chu, first of all, Write your name on top and then think about the questions you can ask. Okay. Okay. So what you need to do, ask five friends questions about what you want to know. What would you like to know about your friends? Favourite colour? Favourite team? Okay. What would you like to ask? G-O-W. W, like cow, P O W. And you can ask me too, guys. What pets do you have at home? And don't forget what to come at the end. Yes. Okay, so what question would you like to ask? A question you can ask can be simple. What is your favourite colour? Like we demonstrated before. Or you might ask, what do you eat for breakfast? P R A E W. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet exercise where they had to think of questions and collect data from their friends. And what we're going to do in future lessons is we're going to look at what we do with the data to produce facts and figures. But that was very well done, guys. Excellent. <laughs> and that's all we've got time for today. So we hope you've enjoyed the lesson, had some fun too. And remember, when we talk about data, we're talking about facts and figures. So we'll see you all again soon in the next lesson. And can we all turn to wave and say goodbye? Goodbye. Bye-bye. See you next time.